Good evening, everyone. This is Susan Campfield with SueStampfield.com. Thank you for being here. Welcome to my craft room. Come on in, grab a beverage. We're going to do a little crafting tonight. Uh, welcome. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I have been a demonstrator for 24 wonderful years. Uh, I love uh, sharing creative ideas and um, stamping with you guys. Sometimes I get into a quandary on which way to finish a card and you are all so gracious in giving me your votes and your opinions so that we're kind of making the card together which makes it just a little more fun I think. So welcome everyone. I see we've got um, oh it's rainy in Tucson and rainy in California. Guess what it's doing here in Minnesota? <laughs> It's snowing and uh, it's been snowing all day, most of last night. So uh, lots of lots of the white stuff here, which has been very pretty as long as you don't have to go drive in it. Right. Um, I hope my sound is OK. I got my mic way down here. I don't know if you can hear me at all. Um, how are you doing? So the last time I was here was actually on Sunday, which is a little unusual. And that was for a monthly event that I'm doing. So you're here on Tuesday, Tuesday evenings. I do a live tutorial tutorial at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then on Saturday evenings, I do a live tutorial at 7.30 Standard Time, uh, Central Time, sorry. Um, and then uh, that's every week. I also send out free project sheets every week. And then in addition to that, I do a monthly event called Crafternoon. I just started this in January. And so we just had our Crafternoon on Sunday. And for those of you that are familiar with Crafternoon, um, some of you are waiting for the tutorial bundle of those projects. Um, they, I'm working on it. I'm really close, getting there. Um, and uh, for those of you that placed a qualifying order in January, I will email those tutorials to you as soon as they are done. And for my Stamp Field Service team members, you will also be receiving those tutorials as soon as they are done. So sit tight. Maybe I don't want to overcommit. Late tonight, it might not actually officially go out until tomorrow. So, um, and then it, for those of you that are interested in purchasing the tutorial bundle, that will be available um, through my blog, which is suestampfield.com. And so you can um, get it there. So if you subscribe to my weekly uh, emails, uh, you got some free, free, bleh, free project sheet uh, on Sunday, um, actually two, and that was a fun one that we did um, the previous video. And then, um, yeah, I'll send out another email later this week. So if you haven't subscribed to those free project sheets, they are right here. I do offer lots of free ideas. The Craftinoon tutorial bundle is a, a, a purchasable bundle, though. Just it, a little confusing to people, I think, because it's um, something a little bit different. So this is where you can subscribe both to follow my blog if you want to know when the tutorial bundle will be available and also for the project sheets. So let's go ahead and get started. We are like, oh, just hit my mic. Sorry. Um, as I mentioned, it's very snowy and very cold here in Minnesota. Let's see. It's seven degrees. That's not terrible, um, but it's very windy, so it's cold. Um, so I wanted to just make my own little spring today. <laughs> so we're going to go daffodils today, uh, one of the beautiful spring flowers. We've done a lot with tulips, but we haven't played with the daffodils um, much. So I'm going to go ahead and flip cameras. Thanks so much for being here, guys. See everyone checking in. Awesome. Um, line closed to not see all the new snow. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just close off that snow. We're, we're going spring. We're going to just think green and blooming things and it won't be long. I'm sure in some areas of the country daffodils are already coming up. My, my uh, sister is traveling right now and she said she's seen them coming up. So, um, that's perfect. I'm going to switch to my other camera here. There we go. You can see my desk. Um, a little bit wonky. There we go. <laughs> like the sound effects you're getting today. So um, so we're going to play with daffodils. So that um, leads me to the, the Crafternoon. So I wanted to show the Crafternoon projects for those of you that haven't seen them. And I also want to make sure my camera is right side up. Yeah, okay, we're good. 
<laughs> so um, here's what Crafternoon is all about. I take a fun fold project and then I make uh, five or more different designs with that fun fold. So one of the fun folds that we uh, did, which one is this? Okay. Uh, one of the fun folds, uh, the fun fold, the featured fun fold. Oh my gosh. Spit it out, Susan. <clears throat> the featured fun fold for February. That's hard to say. Um, is this one. And it is uh, the box top pop up card. So this one is with the beautiful Daffodil Afternoon Designer Series paper. This paper is a free choice of celebration. Uh, my followers told me that one of the cards that they struggle with designing the most are sympathy cards. So this one uses another celebration product called um, Special Moments Stamp Set, which has the thinking of you and then the with sympathy. And then the pop-up, there's a little... Uh, pop-up portion there. And so this card shows how you can do the pop-up with the um, with the designer paper on the inside. And so, uh, oh, somebody's already got daffodils coming up. Crocuses are, oh, crocodiles, crocuses are already blooming. Awesome. Um, so the card closes by just tucking under this box top flap. And so this is a version with just a uh, inside greeting. And this version is the same exact card but on the inside, I have a daffodil that pops up. And so that daffodil is on vellum. It's on that little pop-up stand. And uh, this, these will be part of the paid tutorial. Just show you the other cards quickly that we made um, or that are part of that tutorial. Um, this one is the Happy Easter card with the Simply Marvelous uh, free paper. I just am in love with this duck. He's just the cutest dang thing. Uh, and then inside we've got our little chick who's also very cute. And this one is um, in the tutorial. It shows you how to use six by six paper to do this same uh, technique. So the daffodil one shows how to use 12 by 12 paper uh, to do the pop-up and the uh, Easter one shows how to do six by six paper. Of course, you can take this fold and use your own products to do whatever you want. So uh, this is the one. And now customers that placed a $50 order with me in January got a packet to make this version of the pop-up fun fold card in the mail. And so it pops open like that. And then inside we have our little happy birthday. Got some sparkly sequins and party streamers there all sorts of fun things with the amazing thanks dies on the front. Um, and so customers that are placing a $50 order with me this month will get a packet in the mail in March for our March featured Crafternoon Fun Fold. Um, this is another version of that card. Now, this one did remind me of a present. That's the idea I was looking for is a birthday present. I love fun folds too, Sherry. They're just my favorite. Um, just makes it a little more fun, right? So this one, I did like a tag on the present, a stamped tag, and it opens up like that. And I added the little uh, chick there from the Hey Birthday Chick uh, stamp set. And that's what the birthday and the streamers are from, those dies. And you can see there was a die that cut out that little chick. So that was uh, that was some of our uh, box top pop-up cards. Again, these will all be in the tutorial bundle. And then we also have this one. One of the other cards that my customers or my followers tell me that they struggle with the most are masculine cards. So I wanted to use the new Home and Garden bundle. Um, to make a masculine card. And I thought the box top card looked a lot like a shed. So I made this one to be like a tool shed. Um, these dies are so cool. They have a separate die to cut out the blade for the trowel, um, the ladder, even these little hooks or dies, they're just super cool. Um, and then it opens up like this. And I made a little bench on the inside that pops up. Again, this is all in the, the paid tutorial bundle. And uh, we even have our shovel there up on hooks on the wall. So after the video, I mentioned during the video that I really wanted, oh, I'm missing a card. Hmm. Okay, there's one more. I'll find it here in a minute. Um, anyway, after the, during the video, I mentioned that I really wanted to use this same idea, but to make it a potting shed. I have some family members that are gardeners and it is um, perfect for gardening. So. I paired it with the balloom where you're planted. Oh, I, my secateurs 
or pruners or whatever to call them, they fell off their hook. I got to flip them around there. Um, so I used the bloom where you were planted designer series paper to cut the pots and the plentiful, plentiful plants bundle to do the greenery. Um, I cut the ladder down a bit to make the step stool, but this one is my gardener card. I even used the, the pebbles there um, to be dirt coming out of the pot. And then when you open up the card, Inside, we've got another pot being planted there and then wishing you your best year yet for to go with that birthday wishes. So this card was so much fun to make. It just I just got to play and create and it was a lot of fun. So um, so that's that one. There is one more. <laughs> oh, hang on. Where is it? Where is it? Aha, I found it. <clears throat> it was over by my computer where I was doing the tutorial. So the other version is um, I, I turned the design on its head. So most of the cards are like this. This one I turned and I adapted the measurements a little bit to make a hat card. And this particular hat I made was a shamrock hat for St. Patrick's Day. So it opens up like that. We've got the rainbow inside from the Sunshine and Rainbows designer series paper, some clouds behind, and then a pot of gold that I made actually with one set of dies, um, mostly just, uh, well, two dies in the set that were used to make all of the, the, uh, co the coins there or the pieces of gold in the pot. So, um, so that is the hat card. We were talking on the video how um, there are lots of hats that you could use, uh, adapt the same uh, design for. Um, one thing that, I, that popped into my head was a, a snowman hat for Christmas. Um, also Thanksgiving, you could do a pilgrim's hat. Um, you could do, somebody mentioned you could do a hat for Derby Day. I was also thinking for here in the U.S., the 4th of July, you could do Uncle Sam's hat. So lots of options to uh, really explore your creativity with this. Again, these are all part of the whoops, bump the camera. <laughs> These are all part of the tutorial bundle, which will be available for purchase today. All of these cards, step-by-step, step, very detailed instructions for all of them um, that you can print out and then uh, take to your craft desk and you'll have all the information that you need to make all of the cards. So that tutorial bundle um, is $10 and that will be available later today, tomorrow very soon. <laughs> uh, again, if you want to know when it's up, uh, the best way to do it is to subscribe to my blog and my and or my newsletter um, at suestanfield.com and then click on just subscribe. But today we're going to play with the daffodils. So that was kind of where I was going with this card. Um, I wanted to show how I made this daffodil and we're going to make a different card with it. So uh, What's that card going to look like? Heck, I don't know. <laughs> we are just going to create it together. So, oh, a top hat for a wedding. You know, Zana, I thought that as well. I thought, let me bring that card back in. I That was another one I really wanted to do. I just literally had to stop. I could have kept playing with this design nonstop. It was so fun. Uh, but yes, I thought a black top hat and then put uh, the tulip bud dye, but do it in white. So it looked like a small, like a white rosebud um, would be a really fun wedding hat. So um, great idea. I totally agree with you. I will list all of those options in the tutorial, um, just as suggestions of things that you might want to think about. So let's talk daffodils. So the Daffodil Daydream is a bundle. It is a, a stamp set that is seven images and then a massive set of dies. So these two dies um, go with these lovely uh, images. So if you like to color, you can um, just stamp and color those dies or the daffodils. But all of the other dies um, are, are made to build daffodils with the exception of this butterfly. This one does cut out the stamped image right here or you can pair it with uh, this other one and kind of make your own butterfly it even has a butterfly middle <laughs> which is kind of fun so we're gonna build a, a, a daffodil tonight and i'm going to show you um uh 
how I like to do it to make it a little bit softer than doing it in bright colors. And that involves the blending brushes. So I'm going to bring in my pieces that I die cut and I'm not going to put them on the paper yet so you can see them. So I am making the large daffodil. Um, for those of you that are on my Sue Stampfield Facebook group, um, I did post these um, daffodil maps, <laughs> I call them, that show how to build the daffodil. This is the one that we're going to build tonight. Um, this is the other daffodil that's a good size large daffodil and how to build it. And this third one is a bud. And this, um, these were uh, put out by Stampin' Up, actually, I think on their, I'm not sure where I pulled these from. Um, and I posted them there. I can also post those in uh, um, my email, the next uh, project sheet email that I send for those of you who are not on Facebook. So to build this uh, large size daffodil, which I'm going to bring in here. Um, Claudia, it is, uh, you want to subscribe to my blog at www.sustampfield.com. Um, just click on subscribe and uh, then you'll get notification as soon as that is available to purchase. So I've got um, these white portions. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong map. <laughs> Let's grab the right map. This is the one that we're building tonight. So you can see you need to die cut two of these sort of detailed um parts of the flower and then two of the solid parts. These are the backing portion. And then the kind of the bell of the flower, you need the detailed part and the solid part. So that is what I have already die cut here just to make things a little bit easier tonight. And um, we're going to actually take, so I could have, I could have die cut these out of yellow cardstock. Um, when I tried that, it was just very solidly yellow, <laughs> which um, is fine, but it wasn't, I don't know, quite the look I was going for. I wanted a softer look. So I decided to use the blending brushes and that's what I really liked. So this is the So Saffron ink pad that is our lightest, palest yellow. And I'm going to take my detail parts and I'm going to add some yellow to them. I, for my card, I'm going to leave these white. So my daffodil, um, you know, daffodils come in a lot of different colors. My daffodil is going to be white and yellow, um, but mostly um, um, white or well, I guess, yeah, white with yellow accents. Let's go that way. So I am just um, rubbing a little bit on my scrap paper here so that I don't get any kind of harsh lines um, of yellow on my uh, paper here. I'm not getting enough ink, so I'm going to add more. And you can go as dark or light, you know, if you wanted a bolder look, but you still like the kind of the two-tone that you can get with the blending brushes, you could use the um, Daffodil Delight. You could even go darker with the Crush Curry. You know, it's totally optional, totally up to you. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to stop right there. Um, on that one, I'm going to take this one, but because the blending brush is the nature of them and they're, they are just little fine bristles in here, it's like a makeup brush. Um, just because of the nature, it makes some areas lighter and some areas darker, which is more realistic when you think about it on how a real flower would be. So that's pretty good. I might add just a little bit more right here. There we go. And then on this one, a little bit more color and you can wash the blending brushes um, I never have <laughs> I have certain ones that I tend to use for yellows and I just kind of rub off any excess ink um, that's on there um, this one I think I've only used for pear pizzazz so I do have the stem for our flower here and I'm going to add a little bit do a little shading with that too so let's go ahead and put this one together though so I'm going to take my so saffron ink and close that up and I'm just going to check and see if uh, oh that's okay Susan I'm sorry you couldn't um, you couldn't attend either um, you know it's available on the replay did you get a chance to watch the replay because um, I'd hate to have you miss it I'm going to grab my uh, 
multi-purpose liquid glue. And I'm going to just dot some liquid glue on here. And if anyone else is interested in watching the crafter noon, I do give, um, I know it's a paid class and everything, but I don't know. I, I hate not sharing anything. <laughs> like I, I wanted to give at least the basics of the fun fold to everybody. And that, so they're in that video. I don't give any of the, um, the details about the decorations, but the basics of the fun fold are in that video. So, um, and I, you know, I wouldn't have to make this class public video, but it's just more fun. <laughs> so I do. Um, I'm just dotting on some of this multi-purpose liquid glue. Now, I will fully admit that I have kind of a, I've got, I'm, I'm getting along better with multi-purpose liquid glue than I used to. I used to have a very difficult time with it because I would get too much on and then it would ooze out. Um, so what is the saying again? A lake is a mistake, a dot is a lot. And there's another part to it. I always forget <laughs> to that saying. So, um, oh, you haven't got to see it. Okay. Um, well, good. I hope you get to watch it and let me know if you have any questions. Oh, you've washed your blending brush and it washes up nicely. Good to know. So I've got my adhesive on here. Um, I didn't do too bad, but there's some pretty big blobbies on this one right here. So I'm actually going to let that dry a little bit. Um, and while that's drying, okay, you guys have to slide off here because I need my paper. Yes, I'm talking to my daffodil parts. Totally normal in crafting to talk to yourself, right? <laughs> Work with me here, people. <laughs> so I have my daffodil stem. I love how realistic this is. It doesn't even show, but I think it's cool that it's so realistic. Um, and then I've got a number of stems that I pre-die cut. Um, there are two different uh, stem dies in the set. They are this one and this one. And um, on this card, I did actually do both of them. I think on this one, I might just go with one. I don't know. You guys can help me decide. I'll go ahead and put some ink on both of them and we can decide which one we like better. I'm going to take the uh, pear pizzazz ink. Now this is pretty, this is actually the same color of cardstock. So this is going to be very subtle, but I'm just going to add a little extra color to my stem too. Um, you can do it where you're um, like we used to do with the the uh, sponge daubers and flick it on the sides to get kind of some shading on the sides. You can just rub it all over. So many options, right? <laughs> um, and if you want to do the stem as well, you can. I think I'm going to leave my stem plain and I'm just going to add some more ink on the leaf there. So then the two of them, there's kind of a two different colors. I'm not sure if I'm using this leaf yet. So he's going to hang out over here. I guess I can add a little bit of green to him. There we go. All right. So we've got our, um, our stems. Sorry, need a little more on that one. Ooh, and I crinkled him. It's okay. I'm smoothing him back out. It's all good. All right. They are very long and delicate, so you do want to be careful with that. All right. So let's go to putting our, our flower together, right? I'm going to slide this off. I, th I think I'm done with this paper for now. Um, I'll just set it over there in case we need it again. And let's put our flower together. So I have these two pieces. And they are exactly the same, which means these two pieces are exactly the same. And these just layer on top. I um, don't know if I have them the right direction. Here we go. You could tell because this one was a little bit narrower, as was that stem. So It's also got kind of like an elbow bend there that matches that elbow bend. <laughs> so they, so that's going to give me, instead of using um, a so saffron cardstock, it's giving me a little more lights and darks, but you know, similar, just slightly different. Just to me, it's a little more realistic. And now I have my little uh, bell of my flower and I'm going to put that right over the top. 
Okay, and we're ready to build our daffodil here. So we're actually going to um, put these on top of each other uh, to fill in the fill in the missing petals and build our flower that way. I'm going to grab my glue dots here and my take your pick tool. My house is smelling very fishy. <laughs> my son is downstairs making uh, shrimp scampi and I am not a seafood fan. So pew. <laughs> All right. Anyone else not a seafood fan? Uh, I know most people love seafood, but I am not one of them. All right. So we've got our two pieces together. And then our daffodil is just going to go right on top here. And you can decide where you want it. I think I'm going to put mine right there. Um, and that's how we build our flower. So I'm going to, I'm debating. I think I want to pop that up. I think I want a little more dimension between the bell of the daffodil and the base petals. So I'm going to just pop that on here. And then I'm going to... Oh, Zana, is it Zana? Am I pronouncing your name right? I hope I'm not um, totally butchering that. And then we're going to just add this to our stem. Again, you can add it to the the very tip if you want that fancy part to show. I'm, I'm going to go a little farther down, uh, but I am going to put my glue dot on that uh, portion. Sure you are, Susan. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to put it kind of on this part. If I was doing one of the other flowers, if I was actually doing the bud flower, I would um, be having that portion show. So this is what the bud looks like. It's um, these two pieces together form the bud. And then it actually goes uh, behind the stem. It was the the idea, but with the, the person that designed it. So, which makes a lot of sense. So I've got my daffodil on there and now we can add a stem or two stems. Now this daffodil is quite long. So if you are a scrapbooker, um, this would be a great element to add to a page because it is quite long and it really depends on where you um, attach your daffodil on how long it is. Let's see what ours is ending up to be. Yeah, ours is over five and a half. Now a standard card here in the US is five and a half inches when it's closed. So I'm probably going to be clipping off a little bit of the stem just to get it to fit uh, appropriately on my card. And you can always do that. Cut it down. Okay, I'm going to grab my, my multi-purpose glue again here and just put a bead of glue on the stem and attach this. I forgot to say happy Tuesday. Today is February, which is a two. 22nd, which is two more twos, 2002. So today, and it's a Tuesday. So it's a two, the number two day. All right. So there we have our daffodil. So I would love your thoughts on whether you would like me to add a second stem or if I should just go with the, uh, the main stem. And you can see how you can pull it, you know, you can attach it lower, trim off the excess to, you know, adapt it to however you want. So um, I need to know if I should do one leaf or two. So give me your vote on one leaf or two. And then we're going to get a whole lot of votes going here because, uh, oops, I keep bumping my camera. Dang. Sorry, guys. We've got some options here. And I, I need your advice because I'm not sure which way to go. So uh, I've got lots of votes for the second leaf. All right. Good to know. There's not even a question in your mind that we need two leaves on this card. So that makes it super easy. So that, oh, Susan, you're getting more glue on the desk than you are on the, sorry, I talk to myself when I craft. It's a thing. My apologies. Anyone else talk to themselves when they craft? Because, yeah, it happens a lot around here. I got too much glue. It's okay. I'll just wipe some of that off. That's what fingers are for, right? <laughs> 
in retrospect, I should have put it on the leaf itself, not on the stem. And I want you to lower. You're too high. You're covering up my flower. Yes, I talk to myself. I talk to the flowers. It's all good. All right. So there we have our daffodil built. I am going to be trimming that down, but I'm going to wait until I have my card going so I can decide exactly where I want to cut that down. So I'm going to set that aside. Ah, we have some decisions to make. So we can do a white card um, where we emboss this piece and add our daffodil on that. So crisp, clean white card would be very lovely, very peaceful and calm and spring-like with the whites and greens. And we will emboss this. I've got two different embossing folders we can choose from. Or we can go with yellow and a little bit of the daffodil afternoon paper. We could possibly add a layer of vellum in there to soften that up, and we could add our flower on here. So yellow or white, give me a vote here, people. I would love to know your thoughts. Yeah, need expert advice so you talk to yourself. Great. Yeah, there we go. I like that. I'm going with that. So should we go with uh, yellow or white? Let me know your thoughts. Okay, I got a couple white votes for the white and embossed. I got a couple votes for yellow, more for yellow, more for yellow, more. For... Okay, it, we're going to go with the yellow with the vellum. So thank you for for your votes. I do think the white one will be um, one I can try another time. So let's go ahead and put this one together. I'm going to uh, take my bone folder here. Ugh, all the bone folders I have out are like really not pretty. Where are my pretty ones? I don't know what I did with them. Oh, well, all my craft things are very well loved and well used. So I have this pattern from the Daffodil Afternoon Designer Series paper. This is a free paper with celebration. Oh, gosh, that'd be really cool too. Okay, we're going to do the yellow side, but you know, I'm just playing you guys just to see what that would look like. That's, mm, no, too loud. Don't like it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do the daffodil afternoon paper. And then I would like to know if you would like the vellum or no vellum. So we can play with that. I do want to make sure when you're putting this daffodil on, um, it is directional. So make sure that you put your daffodils right side up. So that is one thing that I cover in this tutorial that to me to I tell you where to score this because it's not scored in the middle so that you make sure your flowers are right side up. So um, here we have it without the vellum, which is quite pretty. And here we have it with the vellum. So vellum or no vellum? I'm seeing a lot of vellums. Awesome. All right, we're going to go vellum. Woohoo! So I'm going to adhere my uh, daffodil to the vellum, and I'm thinking I'm going to want a greeting on the front of my card. So I'm probably going to put my daffodil off. To, uh, you know what? No, I'm going to put it right in the center. I'm going to put it right in the center. I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to go back to my multi-purpose liquid glue. Um, I think I could probably go ahead and trim this now. Uh, so I'm just laying it on here to see where that's going to, where I want to trim that off on. So I'm laying on my vellum. I'm going to just trim it right here. There we go. Got rid of those messy stems. And there is our daffodil. So I'm going to go ahead and add some multi-purpose liquid glue to the back of my leaves, the back of my stem, the back of my other leaf. And then I'm also going to add, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to sneeze. Is it too early to get allergies? Because I swear, <laughs> I don't know if anything is budding out there in the snow, but I swear my allergies are starting to kick in. All right, so I have a little glue dot here. And I have very mild allergies, so it's not a big deal. But, and then I've got another glue dot. I just really want to make sure this isn't going to fall off or go anywhere. Um, and it's going to stay put. So one more glue dot just for insurance. 
can never have too much glue, right? Well, yeah, you can, but not glue dots because <laughs> they don't ooze on you. All right, we're going to pop this right in the middle of our vellum. Sticking that down right there. And now I'm going to attach my vellum to my card. I don't want my adhesive to show, so I'm actually going to put my adhesive just behind the flower so that it's hidden. And it's really easy with vellum to see where it's going to be hidden because you can see the, vel the flower right through there. So I'm going to add some seal right to uh, the largest area, which is behind the flower. And I'm going to grab my multi-purpose liquid glue one more time and add a little bit of liquid glue. Now, if you don't like liquid glue, there this is wide enough that you could certainly do glue dots as well if you're not a liquid glue fan. So I'm strategically applying <laughs> the adhesive so that it doesn't show um, through. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so we're gonna flip this around and we're gonna adhere this to our card like so. And I think that this would make a really pretty sympathy card. So I'm gonna add a sympathy sentiment. Um, actually gonna add the thinking of you and just to make things easy, um, I happen to have the same two stamps that I used on my card. Again, these are from the Free Celebration Special Moment stamp set. So I'm using the, um, where is it? This is such a huge set, I have trouble finding the images. Yeah, the thinking of you and the with sympathy. I love this set because it's gonna, it covers so many different events, like just, everything. So I'm going to, you know what, these look like they have mossy meadow on them still, and I don't really want it that dark. So I'm going to clean them off with my stamp and scrub. There we go. So much better. All right. So I'm going to grab that piece of white that I had in case we decided to do uh, this will be going on the inside of my card. And then I have many, many scraps of white on my desk, as I'm sure many of you do as well. I'm going to grab that Pear Pizzazz ink pad, and I'm going to do the thinking of you in Pear Pizzazz. Now, that might be too light. We might want to do it in Old Olive. But what the heck, let's give it a try here and see what we think. You know what? I think I'm okay with that. That looks fine. So let me grab the double oval punch which is right here and I'm going to slide this in and I do it upside down so that I can see where the image is and uh, punch it out so much easier to stamp first and then punch instead of doing it the other way and then I can add my thinking of you right there now we could add a layer behind that um, let's see what we think about that. This uh, is a double punch, so it's got a scalloped layer. So we could add um, a, a white layer behind it. And we could do it up here. We could... Um, so, okay, so let's start with this. Do you want the, just the smooth-sided label or do you want the layer? And we can change up the color of the layer, but I do think white's probably going to be best, but I will do one in the pear pistache just so you can see that. I kind of like the white. Um, the dies are really cool, Audrey. Audrey has the stamp set, but she doesn't have the dies, but um, the dies are really cool. So this is what it looks like with pear behind it. And this is what it looks like with white behind it. And this is what it looks like with nothing behind it. So I'm liking, uh, I've got one for the smooth sided, but several for the layer. Sounds like you guys would be okay either way. Um, okay, so we're gonna go with the layer. Do you want white or green? So if you can vote white or green on the layer, that would be great. got a couple green. I've got a couple white. It's a dead heat right now. Woohoo. Patty says try yellow. Ooh, Patty. 
Ready says try yellow. I'm all for trying new things. Let's give it a go. Let's try a so saffron layer and see. Now I'm really gonna get crazy. Mix things up. So there's the so saffron. And it doesn't have to be there. We can decide where we want it, but um, here's the green and here's the white. <laughs> now that I added, uh, gosh, it's still kind of tied. Uh, no, I think I'm seeing a few more green. All right, we're going to go green. <gasps> we're making it exact. You know, I think it's going to look good no matter what, right? That's the, that's the end game, right? All right, we're going to go ahead and adhere this on. Let's put it in the middle, Susan. Not wonky. There we go. That looks a little better. There we go. And we're going to put that with some dimensionals. We can put it right at the base of the stem, or we can do it off to one side. So uh, give me your vote at the bottom or off to one side. So just say bottom or side, bottom or side. And while you're deciding that, I am going to stamp the with sympathy on my inside portion. Why is that looking so weird? I do clean that, right? Okay, yeah, I think I did. All right, so I've got my with sympathy on the inside. Okay, yep, you all, uh, I think pretty, uh, the most votes are off to the side right here. So let's do that. Again, I think either would look nice. And sometimes we don't get a pick because we're trying to hide, <laughs> we're trying to strategically hide a boo-boo on our card, right? <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't have anything too bad that I need to hide tonight. So got that off to one side there. And there we have our card. We're going to put our inside piece. Of course, we could always add a ribbon. We can always add embellishments. You all know that Susan likes to do that. But we don't have to. There is a lovely sympathy card to drop in the mail to somebody to help bring them com peace and comfort at a difficult time, right? Um, we could add a ribbon on the side, you guys. Who knows that Susan loves ribbon? Let's just play in. I'm just playing. Let's also take a peek at my, my special drawer, my drawer full of embellishments, which is quite a mess because I love embellishments and so it's just jammed full. We could add, if my pearls decide they want to play right, we could even add some pearls on here just for the heck of it. Just because we can. If you wanted to keep it flat for, for mailing purposes, you could absolutely skip the embellishments. Kind of like the pearls, I gotta say. Big surprise, right? Susan likes the embellishments. So uh, Cindy's not a fan of the embellishments for sympathy cards. So uh, totally get you, but I'm gonna, I did, I did go there. So um, there we have our daffodil card. Thank you guys for helping me uh, decide on the final version of that. I always appreciate your, um, your advice. So uh, I'm going to close up the ink pad here before, <laughs> before I put anything important in it. Um, so again, this is our uh, box top pop-up version on the vellum with the daffodils. So they kind of are similar and I'm using the same stamp set here. So um, again, the Crafter Noon uh, fun fold feature of the month was this box top card that I did in many different versions, <laughs> many different versions. And these will be all available in a tutorial coming out. Did I do this one? Yeah, I did that one. <laughs> coming out uh, later today. So, uh, or this evening, I should say, I still have a few hours to go. So um, it should be there by tomorrow for sure. Probably be a late night here. And uh, thank you all so much for joining me. The pearls are, are okay because they're low key. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think um, 
Yeah, nice job, everyone. I agree, Jennifer. They everyone really helped me out tonight, as they always do. You guys always do such a great job. Um, so thank you for for helping me decide things. Um, I agree. I think rhinestones for a sympathy card would be a be a big no, right? Um, pearls, yeah, they're maybe soft enough that that's an okay thing. So. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Oh, did I leave that up the whole time? Oops, I hope it wasn't blocking anything. Don't ever hesitate to give me a shout out in the comments. Say, Susan, take that banner down. I can't see. <laughs> so, um, so again, if you want to be notified when the tutorial is available to purchase, you can subscribe to my blog. There'll be a blog post that will have a PayPal button that you can purchase that from. And those of you that qualified for the class, you're going to be getting those packets, uh, getting the email from me with uh, all the tutorials in them. And team members, same, you'll be getting the, uh, the bundle for me in the in email. So if it doesn't show up within the next couple of days, um, give me a shout out because you'll be getting it very soon. It'll be in the next 24 hours for sure. Uh, those of you that have placed an order this month, Yay, you're going to get a hap some happy mail from me next month. We'll have a new fun fold that we'll be playing with next month. And so if you place a $50 order before tax and shipping here in February, you will get that packet and uh, be part of the next crafting. And of course, you'll also get all the, the entire tutorial bundle for that fun fold. So remember, celebration is almost done. So make sure you get take uh, advantage of the free stuff and... Um, have a great night, everyone. Thanks for joining me here. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.